Hello there, trash pandas. Have you ever wondered what it would be like if Planet of the Apes had a baby with Inspector Gadget and the baby grew up watching Doctor Who? No? Well, you're getting it anyway. Ape Escape is a game where you run around swinging a net to catch runaway ape monkey... Hang on, I need to get this out of the way. The game is called Ape Escape. So we're catching apes, right? Well, the game seems to take every opportunity to call them monkeys. What, was Ape Escape a more catchy name than Monkey Bunk? Oh, but what's the difference, right? I'm just being pedantic. Well, let's have a look at the actual classification. Monkey is a common term for mammals known as simians. Traditionally, all simians are known as monkeys except for apes. Apes do not have tails. So let's have a look at these monkeys. They have no tails! Oh, and don't give me that crap about apes actually counting as old world monkeys. That's entirely not what I'm on about here. It would have taken nothing to just give them tails. Then I wouldn't be having this rant. Or why not just call them apes? Okay. Okay, I'm done. I just needed that off my chest. It's been brewing for decades. Anyway. Ape Escape is a game when you run around catching escaped <clears throat> monkeys... And as a foundation for a game mechanic, that's actually pretty solid. What it does with that concept, though, sort of becomes completely nuts. So for a start, let's look at the story. When the game first loads, you get a nice little intro cinematic with Spike, the player character, running along with Buzz, who I guess is his best friend. To go see the Professor, for some reason. There's a time machine mentioned. Also, there's his assistant, Katie. Look, the game takes absolutely zero time to explain who any of these people are. You just have to kind of work it out from context, and it's a lot to take in for a short intro. I always figured I'd miss something, like if there was some prior reading, or if it was based on an existing franchise. But as far as I can tell, nope. Like, this shouldn't even really be a big deal. The story isn't exactly that important. It's just the setting for why you're chucking a net about. But it just became really evident that I had no idea who these people were where a little into the game, the villain appears like, aha, look who I've brainwashed to turn against you. And all I could think was, who the heck is that? I figured from the shocked reactions from the other characters that it was a big deal. And then I finally realized, it's Buzz, the guy who existed for like five seconds in the first cutscene. I actually entirely forgot he existed. I get the feeling this is all explained in the game manual. This is just sort of how they used to do it back in the days when they had limited storage space. But my manual is long gone, so if anyone happens to actually have a copy, please do let me know if it says anything about these people. But getting back on track, it's later explained that Spectre, one of the <clears throat> monkeys from the local monkey park, gained intelligence from one of the professor's totally ethical, don't think about it too much experiments, and now he's instantly on a quest to overthrow humanity, releasing his fellow monkeys and hijacking the professor's time machine to basically stop humanity from ever becoming a dominant species. The guy had intelligence for all of five seconds, and he decided he hated people. Yeah, same buddy, same. So, some chaos erupts, the monkeys spread across time, Buzz, who apparently is here, vanishes, and Spike gets launched into the past. So can you work out what the goal's going to be for the rest of the game now? You hop into different parts of history and catch as many monkeys as you can. And like I've said, it's a surprisingly solid foundation to build a game around. Each period of time is separated into three locations, and you visit each one by one, moving on to the next when you've caught a set amount of monkeys. It's important to note that you don't actually capture all of the monkeys in the level first time. Sometimes some of the monkeys aren't even accessible the first time, and once you hit the required number you instantly get warped out of the level. So if that completionist itch is starting to be set off, you're going to be doing some backtracking. Oh, and if you like being praised, this is definitely the game for you. You get showered in it for literally doing everything. The controls are interesting. The triangle, square, X, circle buttons are for selecting your tools, while R1 is jump and L1 resets the camera. If you're used to having the jump button in, you know, the normal place, then you're gonna fumble around a lot while you get the hang of it. But honestly, once your muscle memory catches up, it's actually a pretty user-friendly setup. But you see, if the buttons only select the tool, how do you actually use them? Well, to explain that, I first want to talk about what old PlayStation controllers were like. Back when the console first released, we had this little finger-blistering monstrosity, and after a couple of years, Sony kind of realised how insane that was, so they released the analogue controller with the left and right sticks. You know, the general design they've kept to this day. 
but most games still didn't really recognise that there even was a right stick, and some weren't even usable with the analog setting on. So Ape Escape feels like it was an attempt to change that. You see, the right stick is what you use to control all of your gadgets and weapons. Point the stick while you're holding your net, you swing in that direction. Twirl it while holding the stun bat, you look like you're in your first ever lightsaber fight. But it's an effective way to make the tools versatile, it's impressive just the amount of mileage they actually get out of it. Which then brings us to the gadgets themselves. There's a wide selection and the game tends to throw a new one at you every two or three levels, making you go through a nice little tutorial section before you can progress. And honestly, they're all pretty good. You'll find uses for all of them. You have your two starting gadgets, the bat and the net. These are pretty self-explanatory, you whack things with the bat and catch monkeys with the net. There's the radar, while not exactly required to complete any level, makes hunting down the last few monkeys so much easier. There's the sky flyer for reaching new areas and not breaking your kneecaps when you fall. Then there's the more unhinged gadgets, like the hula hoop that makes you run really fast and damage everything in your way. Or the RC car of death. Nowadays having a handful of different mechanics like this doesn't really seem like much, but back in 1999 it blew my mind. Going back and finally playing through Ape Escape again, it highlighted all of the flaws that early PlayStation games just always had. It was a 3D platformer for a start, and even the titans like Crash and Spyro could be finicky with that. The controls can be unresponsive at times, you'll find yourself battling with the camera a lot, your brain will pick the worst time to forget about the weird control scheme and you'll grab your net instead of jumping and then fall to your death. And you might think I've spent most of this video complaining, but you know what, I've actually still really enjoyed myself. Let me put it this way, I normally only need a little bit of recording to make these videos, so I thought unlock some of the tools, play through a few stages, that was it. But then I didn't stop playing, I, I kind of couldn't stop. Ape Escape is just a genuinely enjoyable game. The gameplay loop is satisfying, especially seeing all of your captured monkey's icons at the end of the level. The platforming, if a bit temperamental, it's rarely to the point of frustrating. The level variety is actually great. The gadgets are genuinely fun to use. And the soundtrack is pretty memorable, even if it's just because it's all short enough loops that it became brainworms and buried its way into my ears. All in all, I'd say it just suffers from simply being a janky old PlayStation game. But I'm also janky and old, so stones and glass houses and all that. It's definitely a game I'd be excited to see a remake of one day at the very least. But this has been a love letter to Ape Escape. As always, if you've enjoyed me rambling like a confused old man, please do help me satiate the algorithm beast by hitting the like and the subscribe and all of that. And if you'd be interested in more genuine chaos, I'm considering starting the occasional stream again, but here on YouTube this time. I have a few game ideas lined up, and Ape Escape is included. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Now I'm off to watch Planet of the Monkeys.